Hey everyone, GraphDBA here with another video. And today I'm going to be exploring the use of PowerMax SRDF replication to replicate an Oracle database that's using ASM. But first, the usual boring legal stuff. I work with Dell Technologies, that said my opinions are my own and do not necessarily represent Dell. Okay, next. SRDF is SAN replication technology that's been around for quite a long time now. It's unique to the PowerMax line of storage arrays. It's used by lots of large and important organizations to replicate important data from one PowerMax to another, which can be across the data center or across the country. Most Oracle DBAs like DataGuard for replication, and I do too. DataGuard is pretty great. There are quite a number of pros and cons with respect to DataGuard versus SRDF, and plenty of larger organizations use both. I'm not going to dive into the pros and cons here today because it would end up sounding like a marketing video, and that's not what I'm trying to do here. So just know that in many cases, people who run Oracle like to use SRDF to replicate their databases. Here on the screen, I have a diagram showing a rack database using ASM on a PowerMax, replicating the disk groups to a second PowerMax with SRDF. The left side of the screen is the R1 copy. That's the primary database. The right side is the R2 replica. The R2 is being written to by the R1. Note that the R2 is not mountable while it is being written to. However, I can make a snapshot copy of the R2 replica, and then I can mount that snapshot to a database host. Note that the WWN IDs of the volumes on the R1 side are not the same as on the R2 side. They are different volumes, so as you would expect, they have different WWN IDs. With my snapshot in place, I can then mount the ASM disk groups and open the database. At this point, the database on the right is an exact clone of the one on the left, but like with any snapshot, it is a point-in-time copy. Changes made to the primary database will continue to be replicated to the R2 side, but those changes will not be visible in the snapshot, and so I won't see them in my clone database. I've labeled the write database here as active, as you can read and write to it, but any writes will not be replicated back to the primary copy on the left. When I terminate the snapshot, any changes that I made to my copy are gone. This snap and open process might be useful to check that the copy is working, or maybe run a large report, or even a backup. If the primary system fails, the R2 replica can become the primary site. I can mount my ASM disks, mount my ASM disk groups, and start my database. Again, note that the WWN IDs of the volumes is different on the R2 side, so bear this in mind if you rely on UDEV rules for device management. When we get our fail power max back online, SRDF can replicate any changes back in the opposite direction. This allows us to move the primary site back and forth as needed. Replication can be synchronous or asynchronous. Synchronous provides the best protection, of course, but can also be a source of latency. There's also Metro mode, where instead of active-passive replication, this is active-active replication. Both PowerMaxes present all the ASM disks all of the time. Note that in this scenario, the WWN IDs of the replicated devices is identical across the cluster. To the OS and to ASM, they appear as just multiple paths to the same volumes. Essentially, we have merged two physical PowerMaxes into one logical PowerMax. Why would we want to do this? Well, in a single data center, all database nodes could be connected to both PowerMaxes. If one PowerMax failed for any reason, all nodes of my database stay up. Rack protects my database from database node failure. SRDF Metro protects my database from storage array failure. I can also locate my PowerMaxes in different data centers up to about 100 kilometers apart. In this scenario, the database nodes in the first data center on the left use the PowerMax on the left, and those in the second data center on the right use the PowerMax on the right. If one data center fails, the database nodes in that data center go offline, but my database stays up as it is still running on the second data center. Of course, for this to work, we have to be able to stretch layer 2 networking between our two data centers so that cache fusion can work. And we can combine both conventional SRDF and SRDF Metro, with our first PowerMax replicating to a third site, or the second PowerMax replicating to the third site, or even both of them replicating in a configuration known as SmartDR. Alright, this is starting to sound a lot like a sales pitch, so let's dive in and see how we use this. Here we are in Unisphere, and I've selected Data Protection and the SRDF Groups tab. You can see we already have an RDF Connect group, which was set up by the admins, as it provides basic communication between our two PowerMaxes. We're now going to create a new SRDF group. 
It pre-populates our remote ID, as in this configuration we only have one target to write to, and we label our new SRDF group Swing RG, as this is for Swing Bench. Next we select the local ports to use for replication. If you're not familiar with this, please check out my PowerMax Basics for Oracle DBA video, which helps to explain it. We want to aggregate our replication traffic over both engines, so we'll pick one port from each engine. Here in the Advanced Options screens, I can select Local Link Domino and Local Auto Link Recovery. Link Domino is a feature to suspend writes to the storage group if that write cannot be replicated to at least one SRDF target. So basically, if I cannot protect the write with SRDF, I cannot write at all. It's somewhat equivalent to the Log Archive Min Succeed Desk setting in Oracle. The SRDF setting is not commonly used for databases, and I'm not going to use it here. Also here is Auto Link Recovery. In the event that the link between the R1 and R2 sides go down, if this box is checked, SRDF will try to automatically restore the link and resume replication. If you have a flaky link, this might be useful. Otherwise, you probably want the link to fail, and then operator intervention to restart it. Link Limbo allows us to set an upper threshold and how long to wait for the link to come back before declaring it failed. 10 seconds is typically more than enough. We then get to repeat these settings for the remote side, the R2 side of our replica. We can also select to use software compression on our replication. This can save bandwidth, but will also increase the load on the PowerMax engine, so it's a trade-off. If you have plenty of spare CPU capacity on your PowerMax, then by all means use it. We can also select to use hardware compression if our PowerMax has the necessary hardware option installed. Since this is my lab, I'm leaving both options unchecked. Our SRDF group is now created. You can see a summary there on the right. Next, let's add some storage groups to it. I have selected Swing SG, the parent storage group in which my ASM disk groups Swing Data and Swing Redo are stored. Selecting Protect, I will now choose Setup Replication using SRDF. We only have one target, so that option is pre-populated. But we can choose our replication mode. We have Adaptive Copy, Synchronous, and Asynchronous. The last two are self-explanatory, but Adaptive Copy is a mode where, during heavy writes, the R2 is allowed to fall behind and then catch up later when the load allows. I think of it as similar to Maximum Availability mode in DataGuard. Unisphere can create an SRDF group for us automatically, or we can choose an existing one. Since we just created a group, we'll select Manual and then select Swing RG. You'll notice that we have Establish SRDF Pairs selected. This means that Unisphere will take care of creating the target R2 volumes and storage groups on the remote side for us. The remote service level can be specified too. We'll leave it at Optimized. Note when we run this that Unisphere reports the devices being created on the remote PowerMax. Our local devices, 1Baker0 through 1Baker7, are mapped to remote devices, 1.2Foxtrot through 1.3.6. I gave that process a little time to finish, and then selected the Swing SG Storage Group and Data Protection. We can see our Storage Group replication status is now synchronized. My ASM disk groups are fully replicated to the R2 side. If I check my second PMAX and note the ID changes from 304 to 305, we can see we have an identical storage group, Swing SG, that has two children, Swing Data and Swing Redo. If I pull up Swing Data and the volume list, we can see we have four volumes of type RDF2 plus TDEV, and these have a status of a write disabled, as these are R2 targets. Back on my primary PowerMax, the four devices of Swing Data are of type RDF1 and are ready. These are the live ASM disks for my database. So replicating the two disk groups of the database was pretty simple. But what if I now need to add new volumes to my disk groups? Let's go to volumes on the first PowerMax and create two new volumes. I'm going to name them Swing Data and set the append number to 4, as I already have volumes 0, 1, 2, and 3. Note I am not adding these to a storage group just yet. Now I am going to repeat the operation on the second PowerMax. We need pairs of devices of identical capacities. I've chosen to name mine because I find that makes my life simpler, but it isn't necessary, so you do what works for you. Next, I am back on the first PowerMax, and I'm going to select my SRDF group, Swing RG, and then select Create Pairs. When I pair volumes, I can choose to invalidate either the R1 or the R2. Since I'm on the primary side of the PowerMax, number 304, I am going to invalidate the R2 volumes on the second PowerMax. Next, I'm going to manually select the volumes to pair, and I'm going to add them to the Swing SG storage group. 
I can search for volumes using several criteria, but I named my volumes to make my life simpler, so I'm going to search for volumes with the name Swing Data. Note I am excluding volumes already in use. Unisphere shows me my local candidates. It's found my two new volumes. And now I can add them to the local Swing Data storage group. And now I can select the remote volumes to pair. So again, I'm going to choose manual selection, and I'm going to search for volumes that match the name Swing Data. Unisphere finds the matching candidates on the second Power Max. I'm going to add them to the remote storage group Swing Data. So now I've created two new pairs of volumes, each one terabyte in size. If I now go back to my SRDF group and click SRDF group volumes, you can see all of the paired volumes in the group. And you'll note that whereas all the existing pairs are synchronized, the two new pairs are shown as suspended. So let's fix that. If I go back to the Swing Data Storage group and select Data Protection, the replication state is listed as synchronized, comma, suspended, meaning not all devices are synchronized. Clicking the extended menu, I can now select Resume to tell SRDF to resume replication of all of the volumes in the group. Please note I have only added these volumes to SRDF. I would now need to rescan the SCSI bus on the database hosts and add the new disks to my ASM disk group, but you guys already know how to do that. In the intro, I stated that the R2 replica cannot be mounted on the standby database host while it is actively being written to from the R1 side. Right, but we can make a snapshot of the R2 volumes and then mount that snapshot to give us a point-in-time copy of the database to verify that the replication is working, to feed a backup, to refresh a non-production environment, or maybe test a patch, whatever you need it for. It's really the same process as snapshotting any storage group with ASM volumes, but let's quickly recap. If you notice my six volumes here, two of them are named and four are not. The two named ones are the ones I manually paired. The four unnamed ones are the ones that Unisphere created automatically when the SRDF replication was first established. I'm on the second PowerMax, the R2 side. I'm going to select the Swing Data Disk Group and then select Protect. And I'm going to choose a Snap VX snapshot. And I'll give my snapshot a name. And now I am going to use the Force flag. You see, normally you cannot make a snapshot of an R2 volume that is actively being written to, but we don't want to, nor do we need to, break replication to make this snapshot. Oracle's online redo logs will allow us to recover, even though we are not in backup mode. And I will run my snapshot, and then I will repeat these steps for the Swing Redo disk group. Now I can take my snapshot and link it. Unisphere will create a new target storage group for the link and create the new link devices we need. It just created volumes 171 through 176. And once again, I will repeat those steps for Swing Redo. And just like any other snapshot, we now need to provision our new target storage groups to the hosts where we want to mount the snapshot. I already have a host group set up with my non-production database rack hosts, so I will use that. And I will use my existing port group, 305 Foxtrot Charlie. And Unisphere creates the masking view for us. I will repeat those steps for the Swing Redo snapshot. And then if we rescan the SCSI bus of our target database hosts, we should be able to see the cloned ASM disks. Here on the database host, we'll rescan the SCSI bus using the SG3Utils package, and then tell PowerPath to look for new devices to manage. If I run SimINQ, you can see we have, as expected, six one terabyte devices for Swing Data and four 64 gigabyte devices for Swing Redo. And if we log into Oracle, I can use AFD Scan and AFD LSDSK to show that ASM recognizes the new disks. The Swing Data and Swing Redo disk groups are now mountable. If you want to see the entire database cloning process, including starting up the instance and optionally renaming the data files, check out my video, Mount and Open an Oracle Database Cloned Using Dell PowerStore. It's the exact same process here. All right, that's all we have time for today. Hope you found it helpful. If you did, maybe click like. If you found it really helpful, maybe even subscribe to the channel. And you're always welcome to come check out my frequently gruff, but hopefully always helpful Oracle insights on my blog, gruffdba.wordpress.com. Stop by sometime. We'd love to see you.